Hello, and welcome to another MPG test here with Out of Spec. We are at our favorite little gas station here in Wellington, Colorado, where we start all of our MPG tests. I have with me here the Audi SQ5 Sportback. So not exactly the most economically minded CUV of all the options out there, but we are still very curious to find out what is the real world scenario gas mileage, especially on a road trip. That is what a lot of people want to know. This has a V6, a three liter V6 that is turbocharged, making about 349 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque, I think. And that is quite good numbers for performance driving. But I am not doing performance driving for this. I am doing highway driving. And we'll talk about more of that through the test here. But I am curious to see how this holds up to the claim numbers of 18 highway, 24 city, which uh, averages to, they say, about 20 combined. So we are here to see, are we going to get 18 miles to the gallon on the highway, or will it be less, or will it be more? Let me show you my fill-up procedures. Coming around back of the beautiful district green Audi SQ5, we will take... How do you open this? So I just had to look at the manual. Turns out when the car is locked, the fuel door will also lock. This is my first Audi experience. Ever driving one, experiencing one. I mean, I've ridden in the passenger seat, especially my friend Jeff's crazy Audi A4, but this is different. This is a stock Audi from the current year, 2021. And uh, yeah, I had no idea how to open the fuel door. So that's fun, but your car has to be unlocked. But for fueling procedures, let me talk you through what we do here. Nice little thing to hold their little cap there. That's nice. And for any sort of forced induction cars, turbocharged, supercharged, we put premium fuel. If it doesn't say, but even here it says premium 91, which I have. $4 a gallon. Yikes. So what we do is we put it all the way in, pull it so it starts fueling. So it just clicked off and then I start the timer and when it hits 30 seconds is when I will pull it again just to make sure it truly is full. And then we just hit 30 seconds so I pull it again and it clicked again. So that is a full tank. Let's go drive to Wyoming and find out how our fuel economy does. Oh geez. Got that all closed up. So as I said, we will be taking this up to Wyoming, just over the border of Colorado and Wyoming. And um, it is a beautiful 86 degrees, so I guess a little warm, um, but no wind, four miles an hour. So a little bit of wind, and that's from the south, southeast. But what we do is a loop style two-way test to negate any sort of wind or elevation changes. So join me as I take this car up to Wyoming and back and test the fuel economy. On the inside here, I wanted to talk about what we do on these tests as far as efficiency standpoint while driving. Um, so I won't power up the engine yet, I'll just do accessory mode. Just so I can show you, we keep it between 68 and 72 climate. We also have the lowest fan it'll do while still retaining that automatic climate control. And um, yeah, we try to keep off any sort of heated or ventilated seats, which we don't have ventilated seats in here, and 86 degrees or 88 is the Audi thinks. I will not want heated seats, that's for sure. And um, yeah, we keep it at a GPS accurate 70 miles an hour cruise as soon as we get on the highway. And let's go get started. Fire it up. And we take off immediately. Let's buckle up. We also make sure the vehicle is in its most efficient driving setting. So, okay, go away click these really hard clicky buttons and I'm going to go to my individual because what I did actually that's raising it up here so I'm lowering it back down what I did is I did balanced and comfortable for drive and suspension steering I like sport and then engine sound I'm keeping quiet that is because the steering wheel to me in comfortable or balanced just feels so loose that's one thing I'm not a big fan of with this Audi um, but the sport steering is just fine. Still not super tight, which is kind of strange, 
but yeah basically we just start on this uh cruise i also reset my trip computer so we are getting started at zero hours zero miles no average miles per gallon hitting this green light that's always nice let's hope these other ones happen too um, I'm also not really, even though it is in the most eco-friendly mode, there's not exactly a super eco mode on here. So I will just be gingerly using the throttle just to get up to speed for our test. I'm also going to close this super cool moon shade. It is nice, it's cool to see the stars and the moon, well in this case the sun, but in efforts to conserve the cabin temperature, I'll keep that closed. Um, I have it on 72, which should be just fine for me. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get on this highway right here, Highway 25, and take it north. All right, getting up to speed here. Want to get on the highway just in time for 70 miles an hour. And we do 70 because it is kind of the almost industry standard of highway speeds, even though many states, including Colorado, do have 75 as the speed limit. So we'll get that to 70 here. All right, have it at 70 miles an hour. And I will be right back while I go check to make sure it is GPS accurate. All right, just spent a few minutes verifying the speed. And it turns out Audi 71 miles an hour seems to be almost exactly GPS accurate, 70 every once in a while 69 but it was basically 70 miles an hour so i will keep it at 71 just to give it as accurate as possible and uh yeah going into wyoming here we have a few more miles i think it's um, either 40 or 80 miles round trip i don't remember uh, about an hour total but it is yeah slightly uphill going into wyoming and then slightly downhill headed back and i have ever so slight of a rough sort of off kilter tailwind to assist me on up which means heading back at the exact same time I should counteract that so it's all in the name of science I should also note that I misspoke earlier it is 1824 with 20 average but it is actually 18 city 24 highway so 24 is our goal on the highway here um, I got mixed up because EVs are often the reverse of gas cars, and I touch a lot of EVs. So yes, 24 is the goal. So far it's saying 22.5 on the vehicle, which of course we can't necessarily trust. Um, I will be cross-referencing that with the pump as soon as we get back. But yeah, what do you guys think of this interior? I really quite like it. I, I am mixed about the carbon fiber. I wish it was more of a matte finish. It is glossy. And then you have all this gloss black around here. Everyone probably knows at this point I'm not a fan at all. Fingerprints show like crazy. Pretty cool driver display, although I wish there was a bit more customization and just different modes to view, but it's a very interesting kind of speedometer here. It has your cruise control down here and then this like wave showing where you're at in regards to the cruise control. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting layout. But overall, I'm a huge fan. This nice, big, bulky shifter, it almost reminds me of some like pickup trucks I've driven, but that's not a complaint. I like a solid shifting experience. Even though you're not touching it very often, it's nice to have. Nice big screen. I love the pixel density of Apple CarPlay. That's something I always look for. Lets you have apps like side by side. Well, maybe not. go yeah it lets you have apps side by side just like that the screen is really hot so I don't know if it's like overheating and limiting my input but it's a good screen overall yeah it's just a little glitchy every once in a while maybe it's because of the heat that's interesting um, but I I like using it I like looking at it um, but yeah, we're just chugging along here at 70 miles an hour, and I'll check back in when we get closer to the turnaround point and show you what that looks like. All right, we are coming up to exit seven, which is where we do our turnaround in Wyoming here, seven miles into the state of Wyoming. Right now, the vehicle is saying 25.1 miles per gallon. So that is 
actually impressive. You should also know that we are up up in altitude, uh, probably 6,000 feet or so right here. So theoretically, that shouldn't play too much of a part of it, you know, long term in the drive. But it is just working a little bit harder at altitude. So I would be curious to do this exact test down at sea level. Maybe someone else will do that. But yeah, just enjoying my time in the Audi. It's very comfortable. Seats are comfortable. Very fully adjustable seats. Um, uh, the only thing, I guess, main complaint right now is, well, obviously these buttons are literally blinding me. The sun is just reflecting right off of them. Um, but they are really cool capacitive buttons. I mean, when you hover your hand over them or your finger, it will like highlight what it does and show the different like controls. It's pretty cool. Um, and they are very nice and clicky. I like these buttons. I don't like these buttons down here. They, they're just hard to click unless you hit the very bottom, which I guess is how it's made to be done. But yeah, not, not a fan of those. And even the steering wheel buttons just are really hard to click. Don't really like them. So I am now here at the turnaround point, which is a good place to kind of, I guess, reset my driving. Um, we try not to really stop here if we can help it. Um, and at least with the slowdown, we have a left, left, left. So we just want minimal, you know, exterior factors while we do these tests. Here we go. I do have a yield. I will yield to this Jeep here. And then I will gingerly go. I do have it on the comfort setting, so it's nice and soft on the accelerator. Which, speaking of, look at those pedals. I love that metal. Very, very cool and sporty. I love my bright socks, too. All right, I am getting back on the highway, easing into my 70 miles an hour again, and I will just do it all in reverse. Well, in drive. Going, <laughs> going back. Uh, reverse MPG challenge. Anyone want that? That would be fun. Okay, back at 71 miles an hour on Audi's computer because it's about 69 or 70 GPS accurate. So that's the way to do it, I think. Here we go. All right. So yeah, at the turnaround point, 25.2 miles per gallon or so. Uh, I will be very curious to see how that compares to when I get back because that will tell us what the elevation and wind did as far as the car computer. Then of course we'll fuel up at the fuel station and divide that by the mileage and should be a good, accurate estimate, I could still say, but a very accurate scientific test. All right, I am about halfway back, so about three fourths total. And look at that, over 29 miles per gallon average is what it's showing now. So, I'd say it is a bit conservatively marked uh, on the Monroni and on the website, just you know, explaining what they think the fuel economy is. EPA rated, you might be able to get a bit more. Of course, this is a bit early to tell, but um, I have high hopes. <laughs> this is looking like a fairly efficient, when you want it to be, performance CUV. On a side note, I also changed the CarPlay wallpaper, so it is now black and gray, just like the interior. That's a nice little adjustment there. But yeah, just a beautiful day to drive through Montana, northern Col or, uh, Wyoming, northern Colorado. Yeah, I did not go all the way to Montana. That would be a bit much for an MPG test, but nice, gorgeous rolling hills. Look at that. So yeah, I'll uh, tune in as soon as we get back to the gas station and fill you in on the final results. Something else I really like about this cabin is all the little storage cubbies. There's this cool little one down here, so you can see it. Yeah, felt lined. It's pretty deep, honestly. You could fit something decent in there. And then you have very sticky kind of rubber back here, down here, over here. Just slightly too short for an iPhone 12 Pro Max, just FYI, the plus size phones won't fit there. I don't really know what this would be for though, honestly. I guess the key. Then you have the wireless charging pad here, which can go back to cup holders. And then, oh, you hear that? Yeah, that's for the center console. But now we are here at the final destination where we have our 
little come and go gas station in old Wellington, Colorado. And look at that, 31.2 MPG so far seems to be the average, uh, at least judging by the car itself. Let's see, there goes an old Toyota Venza. If you haven't seen our Venza MPG review, highly recommended. That one blew us out of the water. Um, but yeah, we are pulling in here and I will get you the final tallies. We did 57 point, just over 57 miles, um, 31 and change miles per gallon, 52 minutes total. It's a good little drive. All right, once again, get this set up here. Let's see how much fuel we used. There we go. I want to make sure I fill up the exact same way I did as when I got here. All right. So, it just clicked off. I'm doing a 30 second timer. And once 30 seconds is up, Click it again. And that's just to let the gas settle, make sure it's like as even as possible in there so that when we click it again, it is truly quote unquote full. Not overflowing, we don't wanna overfill the tank. You never wanna do that, honestly. And 30 seconds, there we go. And it stopped. All right. So 1.5 gallons, 1.538. Let me do some math. Wow, that's pretty incredible. So I did the math based on the mileage, 57.3, and the gallons I put in, just over 1.6 gallons. That is 37 and a little bit of change miles per gallon, judging by the pump. And the car said about 31 miles to gallon. So we can safely say a good average between those is 34 miles to gallon in this Audi SQ5 Sportback. That's really impressive. I mean, that is 10 gallon, 10 miles per gallon more than quoted by the EPA or whatever the Monroney based on. Um, this is, wow, that's awesome. This is really a car you could take on a road trip. I was driving conservatively. I had the air con on conservatively. Everything was efficiency focused. So perhaps their 24 miles per gallon was assuming you would be driving it sporty as it was designed to do. But I will say, this has uh, exceeded my expectations, fairly dramatically, actually. So, what do you think? I, I, I just, yeah, I'm running out of words because this is not what I expected to happen. But now I'm going to go drive it a little harder. See you soon in another efficiency test.